In this, our continued chapter two coverage of ions, molecules, and atoms, I will teach you about polyatomic ions, naming and formulas. Let's get started. So there are some ions that are made of multiple atoms bonded together. These are called polyatomic ions. Most polyatomic ions have weird, non-systematic names, so you just have to memorize them. I require my university students to memorize the names, charges, and formulas of the following polyatomic ions. In the cation category, there's only one. It's ammonium, which has this formula and a plus one charge. In the anion category, there are several. Again, you can pause the video and take a look at each of these with their formulas, their charges, and their names. I require you to memorize them. So take a good pause, look at them, write them down, put them on flashcards if you need to, whatever you need to do to get these in your brain. Good? Cool. So unfortunately, this subject sometimes confuses students. For example, when naming compounds that contain ammonium, which is NH4 plus one, students sometimes think that they need to pick apart the nitrogen and the four hydrogens somehow, or something like that, but, but that's not true. You see, when writing compounds, formulas, or names, you should just treat polyatomic ions like NH4 plus as single individual units, just like you would if you were dealing with an Na plus or a K plus. In other words, when writing ionic formulas, do not treat an NH4 plus as separate N atom and four H's. It's way confusing if you do that. Instead, it's a lot easier if you just treat NH4 plus as a single unit, as if it were a single atom with a plus charge at least as far as naming and bookkeeping goes, all right? So you should do the analogous thing when naming polyatomic anions, such as this one called acetate and this one called cyanide. Treat them, at least when naming them, exactly the same as you would for individual atoms that have a negative charge, such as chloride or bromide. In other words, do not let the extra atoms in a polyatomic ion scare you, okay? So how do you name substances that contain or include polyatomic ions? But going back to some principles that we discussed in an earlier video or related principles on naming ionic compounds, I'll link to it in the description below. If you have a polyatomic ion, I just view the entire ion again as being something like an A with a plus X charge or a B with a minus Y charge. Okay, for example, we learned previously that if you've got a cation that has a charge of plus X, and you're pairing it with an anion that has a charge of minus y, and you're trying to figure out what formula it's gonna have, all you have to do is take the x and move it down here and, and get rid of the plus as the subscript number next to the anion b, and take the y and get rid of its minus charge and move it down here as the subscript number next to the cation a, and then slap them together to give you this formula, a, y, b, x. Turns out that if you do that, then the charges will line up so that they cancel each other out, the positives canceling out the negatives, and vice versa. Make sense? Now, to reduce confusion with polyatomic ions, we usually place parentheses around them to separate them from their subscripts Y and X. For example, let's pretend that substances A and B were both polyatomic ions. In other words, A represents some formula that has two or more elements together, as does B. Now, the process of coming up with a formula is exactly the same. I move the X down here and the Y down there. However, when I throw them together in a final formula, because the A term and the B term might have some numbers embedded in them, in order to reduce confusion, I wrap parentheses around the A and around the B before slapping the subscripts Y and X next to them. All right, I'll show you how to do this with an example. I want you to tell me the correct name for this substance, which contains a polyatomic ion, NH4. All right, to do this, we kind of use the same approach that we did with naming ionic compounds, as discussed in an earlier video that I've linked to in the description below. Step one is the atom on the left is just given its regular name if it's not in the D block. Now, one thing that's tricky here is that I don't have just one atom on the left. It's NH4. So the atoms on the left are a cation, a polyatomic cation that we have memorized and you have to memorize it, okay? Name, charge, formula. So the name of this thing on the left, NH4, I don't call it nitrogen tetrahydride or anything like that. I don't do any of that. NH4, I just treat it as a single unit called ammonium and I've memorized that, okay? So that's the first half of the name. Then I move on to step two. Step two, the anion, which is CL minus in this case is given its regular name, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, whatever, except I replace the and with the suffix "-ide". So in this case, I've got a chlorine, so instead of calling it chlorine because it's an anion, I'm going to call it chloride. So the correct name for this polyatomic ion-containing molecule is ammonium chloride. 
And as I've stated before, we never ever use di, tri, mono, tetra, penta, any of those prefixes with ionic compounds, compounds that contain ions in them, even if they are polyatomic ions. All right, let's now tackle another more challenging example so I can show you how to do this parenthesis stuff. So please tell me, what is the correct formula for iron three nitrate? To tackle this, we're going to begin by just writing down the elemental symbol for iron. I'll write it down right there. We will also take note of the iron's charge. Now, iron is in the D block of the periodic table, so it can potentially exist as having different charges depending on what it's bonded to. So how do I figure out what the charge of this specific iron atom is from the name? Yeah, as we learned in an earlier video on naming ionic compounds that I've linked to in the description below, it's embedded in this set of parentheses in the name. This specific iron atom, because it has a number three, a Roman numeral three in these parentheses, is an iron three plus atom. Make sense? Now that's gonna be coupled with nitrate. Nitrate is a polyatomic anion that I talked about earlier in this video, whose formula and charge you've memorized. It's NO3 and its charge is minus one. You follow? Now doing the analogous approach that I outlined earlier, the subscripts for each of these two different halves of our compound are going to come by just taking the negative one and getting rid of the negative and just placing a one then as the subscript next to the iron and then taking the three, getting rid of the positive charge and moving it down here as a subscript next to my nitrate. Okay, so when I do that, I get this formula. So I've got the, the iron right here and, and it's got a one, but but the one, I don't have to write down a one as a subscript. It's just implied. So I, I if you don't write down a number, it's an implied one, okay? What do I do with the nitrate over here? Well, again, I'm gonna move this three down here. So I'll write down a nitrate and I have to have a three next to it. Now you see how that's confusing because I have two numbers next to each other, a three and then a, another three. It's like a subscript and a sub subscript. This is why with polyatomic ions in formula, we add parentheses. So this is the correct formula for iron three nitrate.